Okay, let's start with running in place. Punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. Keep your weight forward. So your back heel <clears throat> is off the floor. You don't want to lean forward, that offers your face, but you want your weight forward so that you can move easily. And now we're gonna shuffle in a box. Keep your hands up, side, back, side, front, and then go the other way. Knees. Make sure that the, you keep the standing leg bent. Other side. steps and if you forgot to start to watch like I did start it now kicks front side back Okay, so that was six exercises. Run in place, punches, shuffle, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. 30 seconds each, two more times through, and then after you do it, come back and stretch. Okay, so once you've done your three sets times, three times through, reach up, reach over to one side. Other side. And straight up to the front. Reach for the floor. Keep your chin up. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch, both heels are on the floor. If you want more stretch, put this elbow inside your knee and push the knee open. Turn, stretch your hip flexor, make sure that your ankle is out past your knee, not tucked in here like this. Straighten up your legs. All my toes are facing in the same direction. My chin is up, my back is flat. I reach my chest toward my front knee. That stretches this hamstring. Also stretches this calf a little bit. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees out. Other side, grab your ankle. Make sure your chin is up. Down in the side stretch. And 
turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Toes all in that direction, chin up, back flat, chest to your knees, stretch your hamstring. And then have a seat. One foot out in front of you, pull the other foot across the knee. Okay, if you can tuck this foot and still keep your whole butt on the floor, do it. If you can't, if you have one side of your one hip up when you do that, keep the leg extended. Whichever knee is up, take the opposite elbow, put it outside the knee, and push the knee across. <clears throat> Other side. Okay, feet out. Make sure your chin is up and your toes are pointed up. If you roll your toes in, you're not getting much of a stretch. So chin is up, reach your elbows toward the floor. We're getting closer, still elbows to the floor. And bring your feet together and reach your hands as far out as they'll go. You don't want your toes pointed, toes should be pulled back Chin should be up, so you're not here, but you're here. Pull your feet in, heels are on the floor, rock back and forth. Then put your hands on the floor and straighten out your legs. Okay, so we're gonna start with squat lunge. When you do a lunge, you wanna make sure, I generally step back when I do a lunge, you can step forward if you want to, but I find it's easier to get myself in the proper position for this knee if I step back. You want your knee over your ankle. If you have your knee out here and your ankle tucked behind it, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So you want to step back here far enough that this is straight up and down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go squat, lunge, squat, lunge, squat, lunge, squat, lunge. Okay, then I'm going to have a seat. And I'm going to put my hands way up here, not back here behind my hips, but way up here in front of my hips, out far enough that they're not bumping into my body. Then I put my feet flat on the floor and lift my butt up in the air so my back is in tabletop. This is called tabletop. You're going to keep your feet where they are. You're not going to let your butt touch the floor. You're going to pull back to an L sit. So forward, lift your hips, and push them back. And the last one is called a sit out. Put yourself here, hands and feet are on the floor. It's not a plank like you would do a push up. My butt's way in the air. So I can pick one hand up, touch the opposite foot. The foot that I'm touching is going to shoot through the hole that I made when I picked my hand up. Then I bring it back and I go the other way. So we did squat lunge, we did tabletop to L-sit, and we did sit-outs. We did 30 seconds of each one, 
I want you to do one more set, 30 more seconds of each one. Okay, this month you're getting your stripe for excellence. And for the lesson today, I'm gonna take a drill from the tungsten of black belt curriculum. Um, and we're gonna work on the pieces of it. And I want you to focus on the positioning of your feet and your body in relationship to your feet. Okay, so we are not going to be in a guard stance. We're gonna be in a fighting stance or a boxing stance. So I'm gonna start here with my feet. I don't know, they're maybe a foot or so apart, just so that I'm planted evenly. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna bring my right foot back. If you're left-handed, you're gonna take your left foot back. But I'm gonna bring my right foot back so that my right toes are just behind my left heels. Feet would be on a small box. If I took a piece of chalk and drew a box, it would be a small box and my feet would be on opposite corners. So when you do trickle chassis, you're in a big box. And this is a very small box. Now what I'm gonna do from this box, I'm gonna put my hands up and I'm gonna take my back heel off the floor. That's to push. I'm gonna take the weight off my front heel. I'm not gonna take my face and go like this. If I do that with my face, I'm offering it as a target. So my shoulders are still over my hips and my hands are up. I'm gonna move forward or back, whichever direction I'm going, the foot that's already there moves first. So if I'm going forward, forward's easy. The foot that's in the front steps and the other one drags behind it. Step and drag, step and drag. And I do the same thing going back. Now what hap tends to happen when you do this is you start here and you do your first one. And then you stand to either to get really big or really crooked. That's not what I'm looking for. I want you to set yourself in front of a mirror or in front of a big window where you can see yourself or videotape yourself and make sure you step and drag. I never step past this foot. I always come back to my fighting stance. So if I'm left-handed, it would go this way. Okay, going forward makes tons of sense. Going back, especially when we add the punch, is gonna mess with your brain a little bit more. So I'm here, if I'm going back, the foot that's in the back, the foot that's in the direction that we're going, moves first. Step and drag, step and drag, step and drag. We're gonna do the same thing going to the side. So if I'm going that way, step, drag. Now look at my feet. I am still in my fighting stance. All my toes are facing forward. Stance is not very big. Hips and shoulders are squared in front. Step and drag. Same thing, go in the other direction. Okay, now we're gonna add two punches to this. So I'm here in my guard stance. I'm gonna step and jab with my front hand and drag and uh, cross with my back hand. So again, this makes perfect sense going forward. Step, drag, step, drag, step, drag, because it's the same foot that's moving. Going back is gonna be a lot harder because it's step. My front hand is always the jab, but the foot that's going in the direction that I'm heading towards is the one that's leading. So step, jab, drag, step, drag. Going that way is gonna make sense. Going the other way is gonna make way less sense. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to face me. And I want you to get in your fighting stance with your hands up. As I come towards you, you're gonna back up. But I'm gonna to come towards you and I'm gonna do jab cross. And you're gonna step back and do jab cross. Now I'm gonna back up. And you're gonna to come towards me. Then I'm gonna to go to the side. And you're gonna stay with me. And I'm gonna to go to the other side. And you're gonna stay with me. Okay, now I'm just gonna move randomly. And I want you to stay with me. And every time you move, you need to throw a jab cross. I can go diagonal too, but I'm always, the foot, the direction that I'm going, the foot that's closer to that is the one that always leads. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to get a partner. And you're gonna come back to here. And what you're gonna do, this is called shoulder tag. You're gonna try to tag your partner's shoulders. If you do shoulder tag, if you come to live class and you do shoulder tag, people tend to run all over the place. But what I want you to do right now is I want you to stay in your fighting stance and you're moving away or to your partner. Okay, if they're coming towards you, you're moving away. If you're going towards them, you're trying to tag their shoulders, 
but you're always staying in your fighting stance. Okay, so um, you guys have two open hand forms to review this cycle. Action Cardio Form 2 from the beginner's class and Action Cardio Form 5 from the intermediate class, which will also be next month's portion of Kamaset. So we're gonna work on both of them and we're working on excellence. So we're gonna do the beginning of each form thinking about doing all the parts perfectly. So we're gonna start off with action karate form two, we fall back in our guard stance. Back fist, make sure you're hitting with the back of your fist, step forward and punch. Now my target's off to the side, which means my toes also have to be at 45 degrees. I'm gonna chamber for a descending back fist. So my hands are in front of me, left one is closer to my face, right one is further away, palms are away from me, step behind, drop my weight back up mass into a cross stance, descending back fist. Now I'm going to do a spin back fist. I'm going to pull my hands in. Left one's on the inside. Now palms are facing me. Spin back fist. Step forward. Kneel and punch. Actually, punch should be this way. This is Kempo. Okay, so I want you to do that. I'd like you to do it in front of the mirror so that you can watch your stances. And then action karate form five. We start here. Look. Step in. Back fist, punch, step in again, back fist, step and punch, and back. Look. Okay, what I'd like you to focus on that is when I'm going left, I'm gonna look left, right, left, and then I go. A lot of times, a lot of you guys go, I don't even know what you're doing. It looks like you're shaking your head. So you're gonna look left, right, left and then you're gonna go left. Then you look right, left, right, go right. Then you're gonna step back, front kick, front kick, step forward, push down, kneel and spear. There's no pump front kick in action karate form that's in it's in six it's in seven it's in nine and black belt form it is not in five okay so five step back and block front kick front kick and down okay I want you to practice that one too like you did with action karate form two in a mirror watch yourself make sure your shoulder and your hips stay square on every move that you do okay Red belt karate kids and white belt tung sudo are all working on basic form one right now. Okay, uh, tung sudo because it's your form for this whole cycle. Red belt karate kids, this is your theme this month. Like if you were doing action karate form nine would be your form and sword would be your theme. This cycle, comma set is your form and basic form one is your theme. Reason for that is that the stances are very different than, than Kempo, and this is getting you in that mindset so you'd be more prepared when you get your black belt and you hit the team class. Um, so we're gonna work today on three-quarter turns. So three-quarter turns starts in, and are always in a right shingle chassis. So I'm gonna start with my feet together, bring my right one out. This is wider than the fighting stance that we did in the, in the warm-up. Your fighting stance was only about here. Your shingle chassis is gonna be much wider. Now I'm gonna take my left foot, and drag it straight back. Just like with the fighting stance, my feet are on two opposite corners of the box. All my toes are facing forward. My hips and shoulders are squared to the front. If I take my back toes and I skew them off to the corner, it forces my hips and shoulders to the corner, which is not what I want. I want them here. So three quarter turn. My left foot always moves. I always turn counterclockwise. I'm going to do it in two counts, two thoughts. Eventually, you're going to smooth it out to one, but for now, I want you to have two thoughts. So I'm going to take my left foot. I'm going to drag it in and turn one quarter turn to my left. Now I'm going to take the left foot again and bring it behind me. It's not going straight back. It's going off at a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to turn. So now I'm in triple chassis, left triple chassis facing three quarters of the way around from where I was. I started here. So three quarters of the way around takes me here. Then I'm gonna step through to another jingle chassis because 
we can't do the another three quarter turn unless we get our right foot forward. It's always right foot, it's always counterclockwise. Okay, so left foot's gonna come in, I'm gonna quarter turn towards my left. So the front of my body is gonna go towards where my left is facing. I'm gonna take that left foot again, bring it 45 degrees behind me, turn. And then I'm gonna step through. Okay, this will be the easiest one for you to follow if you're having trouble because you're facing in the same direction that I am. So I'm gonna bring my left foot in, make a quarter turn, left foot goes behind 45 degrees, half a turn. Now I'm facing three quarters of the way around in shingle chassis. Step through the right shingle chassis again. Left foot in, quarter turn, left foot 45 behind you the rest of the half a turn and then step through. Okay, so I want you to do those till you're dizzy. Okay, this is, we don't call it basic form one because it's the easiest form. We call it basic form one because it's the basis that everything else you're gonna learn is built on. So you need to get that three quarter turn burned into your brain and into your legs. Okay, we are doing two, two self-defenses, the review one, from the, the intermediate class and one from your class. The one from the green belt class is Kataguruma off a hair grab. Okay, I can't show you how to, I can walk you through the moves of Kataguruma. Every self form you do is stylized self-defense. So every self-defense you can do can be made into a little form, which is what we're gonna have to do with it because I don't have someone to throw to demonstrate. So somebody's gonna grab your hair. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna put your hands, they're, they're holding this way, you're gonna put your hands on top of their knuckles squish down and lean back here. That's gonna put stress on their wrist this way. Then you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna turn them over like this. So your thumbs are on the top of their hand. You're gonna grab their hand and turn to the inside so your back is facing their stomach and you're gonna throw an elbow. You might throw a bunch of elbows. This hand is still holding on. And then I'm gonna take this part of my arm and tuck it to this part of their arm so that my whole back is up against their whole front and their arm is tucked to the outside of mine. Then without picking up my feet, I'm just gonna turn and drop my right knee to the floor. And this is not a new self-defense for you guys. This is a review. Okay, so they grab my hair, I grab, I pull, I turn my thumbs over, grab the top of their hand, Step in, let go with my left hand, stand directly in front of them, elbow, turn, make sure I have contact. I'm not moving this foot. I am just turning and dropping my right knee to the floor. Can you see my foot? It's flat. If you drop it with your toes like this and somebody lands on your ankle, they will break all the little bones in the top of your foot. Okay, so I want you to practice that one. If you have somebody in your house who's willing to throw the, to, to grab your hair and let you set it up, up to the throw, that's great. Otherwise, practice it like a form. And then your self-defense. Somebody is coming at you just like a zombie attack. We practiced this last week. You're going to bring your hands up and push out of the way. So up and push or up and clear. And then you're gonna turn and with your palm heel, you're gonna hit them right here at the top of the pack. Okay, I'm not putting my hands on and pushing, it's a pop. So they're coming at me, I step back, I clear, and I push. Here, step back, clear their arms out of the way, push. Okay, that way you can definitely practice with somebody. Okay, um, beginners, so, if you are a beginner in Tung Shido or intermediate or advanced in any other, in any class, you're practicing this. Single chuck, I'm gonna hold it here. I'm gonna do a shoulder block. Okay, I'm gonna do it on my dumb side right now so you can mirror me. And then I'll do it the other way. But if you're mirroring me and you're facing me, if you're right-handed, you're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna let it drop down like this. And you're not gonna let go of the chuck. I'm not holding them way down here. I'm cl much closer to the strength. So I hold it here and take the right one and drop it down. And then I'm gonna take the left one and I'm gonna go underneath this chuck and come up the outside and pull it to my shoulder. So it's gonna be here. Okay, it's a block. 
somebody's trying to hit me, I block, and then I can catch their arm and pull it in. So drop, come outside and under, pull it back. Okay, and then if you're on the other side, drop, outside and under, pull it back. Okay, so then the goal is to be able to do one and the other. Okay, facing this way, it's gonna to come to your right shoulder, back out to the front, left shoulder. Okay, then if you, if you are doing two, so if you are um, advanced or if you're, in, if you're advanced, Karate Kids or Tung Sudo, you're reviewing this. If you're intermediate in Tung Sudo, this is your, yours for this cycle. You're gonna start here. I'm gonna actually start with both chucks on the same hip. Let's do this with one hand first. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my chuck on my right hip. I'm gonna bring it up over my head, spin, bring it back to my left hip. Up, over, back. Up, over, back. Okay, now I'm gonna put them both over here. They're both on my right hip. You're gonna come over the top and back. Over the top. And back. Okay, so the goal here now, I can do this without taking out the ceiling fan. And I'm gonna start here, step, 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 and coming back. Step, 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 step. And then if you want more, start here, come all the way around. And back, all the way around. But this is the basis of it. And this is how you put them back in your hands. Okay, um, advanced class, Tung Shido, so third brown belt, red belt apprentices, and red belts in the Karate Kids class. You guys are doing Kama Set. The first part of Kama Set is Action Karate Form 4. So we're going to practice the first half of that today. So we start here, Kama Set, courtesy, fall back in your guard sets. I'll do this in both directions. So you're going to chop, Punch. If you would like to make this cooler, add the spin there, Ch uh, spear, or this way. It's going to come up though when you kick. Crescent kick. Chop, punch, spear, crescent kick, low block, punch. Okay? Punch the, the spin. I hold it here. Not with a death grip, I'm just holding here. I push. It comes down on the outside and back up. You can actually go out, in, out, in. You can just do in if you want. You can put any combination of them together. But if you hang on really tight like this, it's, it, it, there's, no, there's no flip. So you want to just have it holding here. So from the other direction, we start here, comma set, fall back in your guard stance. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Okay, I want you to practice that. If you are in the Tung Shido class, if you don't, if you're not an AK black belt, that form is probably new for you. So I want you to think about where you're going. If you are a K AK black belt, or if you are in the AK class, you know action karate form four. So I want you to be thinking about doing the moves perfectly, perfect stances and then you can think about the weapons.